So my name is Alexander Pothalusen, and today I want to sh uh, share some knowledge about our product, IntelliJ IDEA. I'm team leader of Scala plugin for IntelliJ IDEA, and I hope that everybody of you will learn something new today. Uh, as I'm Scala plugin developer, uh, I know a lot about IntelliJ IDEA itself, and recently we uh, I participated in uh, our internal JetBrains hackathon, uh, and I uh, had a, I, an idea to solve my personal personal problem uh, because uh, I usually type small popular uh, identifiers like string uh, without auto completion, uh, but sometimes uh, I do ver very obvious typos, and IntelliJ IDEA can't help me with that. So my idea was to implement some typing correction plugin uh, which corrects uh, this on the fly. But uh, why I'm telling you about that, uh, uh, one guy which, is, which uh, is more experienced than me, I mean even, even more experienced with IntelliJ IDEA, uh, he said me that this problem, I mean a uh, problem about strings was solved in Java actually. They have a live template uh, to have string identifier only in three keystrokes. So the funny thing, is, and I, I, I really was impressed because I didn't know uh, about this uh, live template. And probably I will implement the similar thing in, for Scala as well. Uh, but uh, interesting thing that, that even one you think can could impress me a lot, uh, and I think uh, that project uh, was important for me just to, to realize that new features exist in IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, so uh, let's play the game. I'm giving you some tips about in IntelliJ IDEA, and you are calculating number of new things uh, which was new to you. Uh, and also, for the beginning, let me uh, tell a story about our users, uh, uh, so it's about you. Uh, we usually participate in conferences like this one, and uh, sometimes pe people complain about problems they have with IntelliJ IDEA, so we can see how they actually uh, work with IntelliJ IDEA. And uh, we can see that uh, we can declare some uh, state uh, that like about money that uh, you know that 80% of people own 20% uh, of people own more than 80% of money so it's the same amount of people uses uh, almost all features of IntelliJ IDEA but most people use just small amount of them and that's uh, the reason why we are more focused right now on uh, simplifying features, improving discoverability and usability of them. And that's also one of the reasons of this talk, just uh, to improve uh, skills of people, of our users. So the first uh, tip will be about activator templates. So you have them in IntelliJ IDEA right from the new project. We can open new project, press next, uh, here activator, we can choose something like hello world, hello Scala, it's here, and finish. And now we need to wait a bit for SBT, uh, a bit, a bit more, uh, and a bit more. Uh, okay, so now we can just choose uh, main class and run it. Okay, so now we have the fastest way to uh, run Hello World project in IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, but did I mention that you shouldn't use mouse at all? Uh, and I use it. Oh, I use only mouse right now. So we have to start over again just to show how to do this without with only keyboard. So let me close it. And first uh, important tip is about uh, go to action, action. Uh, and when you don't remember keyboard shortcut, 
you can uh, use this action and then you, you, you just need to remember name of this action. And before that, uh, I also don't want to tell you uh, sh sh keyboard shortcuts allowed because it's too boring and it's also almost impossible to uh, remember from uh, this live presentation. Uh, so I hope that the video will be recorded and available later on the internet. Uh, so I will enable uh, shortcuts uh, here. So you will see uh, in the bottom of the screen uh, all action names and shortcuts. So uh, now we can invoke a go to action uh, action and here you can type anything, any name of the action. So now we can put here something like project, choose new project. So we did it from keyboard. And then we can just choose activator. What? It's too too low, yeah? Okay, I'll name a bit. Uh, so uh, so uh, go to action, action is command shift A for Mac OS. Uh, so now we can find our hello Scala with speed search, finish. So new project is opened. Uh, now go to class, command O. Uh, it's not we, uh, okay. We need to wait for SBT again. Uh, go to class, hello, and run from context menu. It's Control Shift R. So we can run to, uh, any uh, main class right from keyboard. So it's it's again the same uh, result, but only with keyboard. Okay, but now you can ask uh, a question. Is it really IntelliJ IDEA? I mean that it looks like some very plain text editor. Actually, it's true, it's IntelliJ IDEA and uh, uh, I just enabled destruction free mode. So in uh, ed action, I can choose uh, put destruction, toggle destruction free mode and again, put it again and it's it's more it more looks like IntelliJ IDEA right now. Uh, but uh, the, the important thing uh, is that in destruction-free mode, uh, you can, uh, you, you, you will avoid using mouses in usual cases. So you will have to learn a lot of keyboard shortcuts and it will make you much more productive with IntelliJ IDEA. And now I'm, I, I will, teach you how to use this destruction pre-mode before we will continue with Scala specific features. Because otherwise you will tell me that it's not possible to use destruction pre-mode at all. So let's start from navigation features. Uh, it's very simple and obvious uh, and we always, but let me open some project, it's Scala plugin project, which is more interesting about navigation. Uh, so, we we always need something like Google search in uh, big projects because we 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 sometimes don't know where to find uh, some class. Uh, so the first tip about navigation will, will be about a search everywhere feature. It's double shift. Uh, it 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 makes all searches all together. Personally, me, I don't like this uh, because it's it's a bit slower than just go to class, go to symbol. Uh, but some people uh, like it because it's only one keyboard shortcut. You just don't need to remember all these features. So it's double shift and you can put here what you want and find lots of things right here, including even actions. So um, my tip is uh, just try it if it's suitable for you or not. Uh, uh, so, and as for uh, ordinary features, navigations like go to class, you can invoke, for example, you want to fix something about implicit uh, search in Scala plugin. So you can open implicit right here, implicit, and you can see that implicit collector is probably what you are looking for. Now you can take a look for this class and probably close 
uh, Scala plugin project and forget it as, as a nightmare. Uh, but generally, we, we, we really found uh, uh, what we looked for. Uh, another thing is that you, you can use camel humps everywhere uh, in any search, in any speed search. So camel humps is uh, uh, like uppercase uh, letters. So if even, uh, even in find action action, we can put here like split, but uh, we can see here horizontal line, vertical. Now we can just put V and it will, it will be split vertical action. So always use camel humps to simplify searches. So we can find split vertical even with three, uh, uh, three letters. So, and then we can just unsplit. Uh, so uh, that's all about navigation. We can tell much more, uh, but uh, it's it's more about not for Scala probably conference. Uh, so let me finish with uh, all distraction free mode things, and we will continue with Scala things. Uh, what's next? It's navigation bar. In, right now we don't have navigation bar. Uh, in our user interface, but why why would we need that? Because we, we can call it on demand. So I can call command up arrow and see this uh, navigation bar right here. So I can put here, using this, uh, it's very small font here, but I can't improve that right now. Uh, uh, but believe me, it works uh, and it's it's, it's really good, uh, not on, on presentation. So uh, now you can even create new uh, classes right from navigation bar. So command N to create Scala class and everything is very good. Uh, next thing is tabs. You can see that we don't have tabs like in Google Chrome, but uh, in, even in Google Chrome I don't like tabs because at some point you can see that you have 100 tabs and and your memory is over uh, because of Google Chrome. Uh, so tabs is not really good idea. Uh, and in IntelliJ ID you can use actually just recent uh, files, it's command E, uh, and what is better in recent files compared to tabs? Because you have speed search here as well. So we can put here like, uh, okay, statement or something like this, and you can go uh, to this class directly. You don't have speed search in tabs. Uh, and what, what else in recent files? You can use recently edited files like command shift E, so it's even smaller uh, set of uh, your, uh, your uh, so it's actual set of your uh, changes. Uh, and if you are really lazy developer, as all developers, all developers are lazy, usually, uh, so you can just uh, do it even with with less uh, number sh shortcuts by using switcher. So with Control Tab, we can switch to the previous file with only one shortcut and return back here. Uh, <clears throat> And next thing is run configurations. Uh, so now we can't uh, run uh, pr run projects uh, uh, or main classes through the user interface. So we still can call it on demand. Uh, so for example, if we want to debug something, we can run control option D and choose any run configuration we want or common control A option R to run it uh, or debug or, or even edit configuration. So a lot of things is available here. And the last thing which is not available here is tool windows. Uh, so some of tool windows like project view you can call uh, on demand uh, with focus exact place where we are, I mean our file, so implicit collector. We can call it like option F1, then select target in project view. And we, we in exact place uh, where this implicit collector is. Uh, some of them we can call like structure view. We don't need structure view always open somewhere. 
We can call it on demand with uh, command F12, uh, and then we can use speed search to find uh, required method like collect, and then navigate to this method. And some, uh, almost all of uh, tool windows is available through numbers. So like project U is command one, we can open and close that. Command nine is like uh, version control tool window. Uh, and then we can do something in this. Uh, and the final thing is that you have recently, recent files, and it also has all of tool windows, so you can open recent files, put here something like SBT, and you will open then a SBT tool window to refresh, for example, SBT. And all tool windows we can close or open all together by command shift F12. So we just hide all tool windows and return back to focused uh, development in destruction-free mode. Uh, so that's all about destruction-free mode and we will continue with Scala. Uh, I want to say that this mode is m my uh, vision of how to use IntelliJ IDEA, so, but I hope that you, 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 you can find some inspiration, some new features, some shortcuts how to use that. Uh, so I think that everybody has to know that it exists uh, and uh, it has a lot of cool things and possibilities, especially on Mac Air of 11th uh, inches. So then it's it's good idea to use distraction free mode. Uh, so let's uh, continue with Scala. And before that, uh, let me tell you s some one more story. I hope you like stories. Uh, so, at the end of 2007, uh, I, uh, when I tried to apply to JetBrains, uh, they asked me to do some uh, test project to, to see my skills. And what I want to say that IntelliJ IDEA can help you learning Scala, uh, and that time it could help me to learn Java. But I didn't know that, I didn't know what JetBrains do, and I sent uh, my project as Eclipse project. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's, it was okay, actually, because they just asked me to resend it in, as IntelliJ project. Uh, <laughs> they, they didn't want to open Eclipse, uh, really. Uh, but I just could look more professional because uh, IntelliJ had some inspections which uh, would work uh, that time uh, for my code. Uh, so the same thing is uh, in Java, uh, in Scala, sorry. So uh, uh, let's, let's move to presentation mode not now because uh, presentation mode is something similar to destruction free mode but it's full screened. So it's only code right, right here. And uh, everybody who presents uh, live demos uh, should use actually presentation mode because it, it, it's much better. Uh, and then you should use lots of things I just showed uh, about uh, key keyboard shortcuts to Windows and so on. So let's open uh, some class and here I prepared some a bit weird code. Uh, so uh, just raise hands when you understand what this code about. I mean this first line. Okay, uh, <laughs> you are not just active to raise hands because developers probably so lazy. Uh, so. IntelliJ can help you with that because uh, we can just uh, replace with non-empty. Okay, that's fine. Right now, it helps that you can replace it just with exist method because it's, it can simplify your code. And then you actually can replace with contains method. So this is was only about contains. And in Scala, you, you are able to write it in long way. Uh, so so 
uh, that's what I'm talking about, that IntelliJ can help you to learn that. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the fly, so you don't need to run some specific action for that. Uh, so we have uh, some new inspections sometimes. Uh, we, 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 are develop, uh, we develop Scala plugins, so something new has to be implemented. And for example, one of new uh, inspection is something like unnecessary partial function, uh, which is also, uh, you can see that in our code base. Uh, but what to do? We want to uh, get rid of all of them. It's quite simple to do in IntelliJ. We can invoke navigation bar. For example, I want to get rid of all of them in worksheet package. Uh, and right, okay, sorry. Uh, right from here, I can invoke go to action, action, and then run here inspection by name. So I can uh, run unnecessary partial function inspection or I also can run all of inspections. It's it's up to you. Uh, so uh, uh, I can choose directory of worksheet and run it. So we found just 14 warnings here. And the interesting thing that I can fix all of them right from here. So convert to anonymous function. So and now we don't see here uh, this case. Uh, and we see here more convenient, uh, simple, anonymous function. Uh, so as we are in a worksheet package, I, I can show you something about worksheet. Who know what is worksheet is? So almost everybody. Uh, you can run worksheet in, in, in light uh, way, so you don't need physical file for that. Uh, and uh, we, we can, you can run action, uh, about creating light, uh, create light color worksheet. And now we have a worksheet which is uh, just for experimenting with your project. You, you don't need to create some physical file and it's like new console, you, you can open it and run and experiment. Of course, uh, you still can uh, create it physical so we can open uh, a navigation bar create here, use speed search and create physical test uh, worksheet. Uh, and now uh, we, I, can, I can show you some uh, small refactorings, I mean intentions. Everybody know intentions, but uh, a lot of intentions are just hidden because it's implemented but undocumented. Actually it's documented, I, I'll show you here uh, where, but uh, not everybody use whole power of intentions. So let try, let's write some code like a list of two, three, nine, then map something like. Here we can, for example, invoke smart uh, uh, completion to complete uh, anonymous function, uh, name it, and then put i plus one. But for example, interesting thing is then we can convert it into a implicit anonymous function. So we can invoke uh, intention and then just introduce implicit parameter. And it, it, it will simplify things. We can do it back, introduce explicit parameters. So intentions is just small refactorings. Uh, another example is with strings. So we can put, uh, let me introduce variable list. So we can, for example, we want to see this list, and we can list values plus list plus exclamation mark. Uh, but we know about interpolation strings, we, we can just invoke uh, uh, intention and convert to interpolate a string, quite useful. But as for strings, even simple thing is available. We can put here, uh, start writing new string, write values, and now we can put dollar sign and see auto completion feature here. So we just can invoke enter and interpolated string is right here. Uh, so now we can finish it in other way. 
But if we have a lot of uh, legacy code with pluses, we can use intention action to convert everything into an interpolated string. Uh, so where to see all intentions list? Uh, we can open a settings uh, here, we can find for intentions. And in settings, we can see whole list of intentions. It's not only Scala and for action script as well, who know what is action script. <laughs> uh, so here we can filter by Scala and see lots of inspection uh, intentions here. Very similar words, so it's simple to. So we can see here that some inspections about uh, intentions about four comprehensions. So let's take a look for them. So for example, if we want to for uh, from list, and now we realize we wanted curly braces, so we want to convert to curly braces, uh, then put if l not equals to two, then for example, yield uh, l. So now we just did some filtering. Uh, and another intention is to to take a look how it looks really in Scala uh, language. So we can use uh, intention to convert, to desugarize this expression one time, the second time. Uh, so it's something like this one. Uh, but uh, in, in the nightly builds, we have uh, even more interesting way uh, uh, how to see desugarize for expressions. So let's go to prepare uh, code, explain Scala code. So it's some very, very simple code, like hello world, similar to hello world. Uh, but if we do explain Scala code action with lots of explanations, we, we can see that it's much, much harder than it looked before. So we can also enable soft, soft traps to see whole string. So you can see a lot of interesting things like algorithm strings, string can build from, and tuple two, and so on. Quite fun. Uh, so uh, now we, let's continue with more features about Scala plugin. Uh, so let me show you something like class. It's see, it's a class representation in our AST internal presentation. Uh, and for example, we want to create a new one. So after new, you can invoke smart completion and to see all inheritors of our C class. Invoke that and then put something, anything. It's quite simple, probably everybody knows that. Uh, what is more interesting is uh, for example, we want to put class and then invoke qualified name. Uh, it's funny thing in, in our code base that get qualified name is a wrong function to invoke. You just need qualified name, but there it, 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 it will be added only through the uh, extension implicit conversion. Uh, so how to remember where this extension implicit conversion is? We can find it just invoking second uh, uh, second auto completion. So now you can see that we have C class X class with the qualified name uh, function. Invoke it, and import for that will be added automatically. So uh, it's quite useful when you don't need to remember all your extensions in, in your code. Uh, then we can. We want, for example, to put name equals class qualified name. But for example, it's not just string, it's option of string. Uh, so it's red here, uh, but uh, we have also something like some smart completion, so we can invoke that and just choose qualified name and some will be added automatically here as well. So we have a, a lot of interesting thing in smart completion, so uh, I want just to inspire you to try smart completions as well. And probably give us feedback to improve that, this feature as well. Uh, and now let's go to something even more 
complicated. So I, I, I'm talking about macrosys. Uh, in, in our code base, we'll also have macrosys. It's very good thing. So for example, we have macro annotation like cached. Uh, so we can uh, cache any function just by using uh, annotation. Uh, and sometimes it's actually not sometimes, it's always hard to implement macro annotation uh, because you need to do a lot of iterations uh, about that to understand how this macro works and to understand quasi quotes and it's, it's, it's a lot of time. And in IntelliJ IDEA, you, we can help a lot. You just need to enable, uh, so let's go to build SBT, you, uh, why macro debug light, uh, and then you can use a quite new feature about macro expansion in IntelliJ IDEA. So let's open C4 statement impl, for example. We have here example of cached. So it's, it's one of the ways uh, in IntelliJ to disregardize for expression I showed you uh, earlier. Uh, and it's cached function. Uh, but in IntelliJ, we can expand it in what is going in our actual macros. So it, a lot of things is here, so we can create few local volatile variables and then expand it into very complicated code. It's not very well because it's pre printed uh, Scala compiler trees uh, and it's not uh, real Scala code actually, but still it will help a lot in understanding what's happening with your macros. And uh, tomorrow in Eugene uh, Burmako talk, uh, Mikhail will show you uh, the similar feature with Meta, uh, which is macro version 2.0. Uh, and it will be much easier to use. And so I, I, I really recommend you to take a look for this talk. Uh, so, the last thing, actually, what I want to show you is about implicit conversions and parameters. Uh, I wanted to show you a few undiscoverable feature about debugger, uh, but after three people uh, asked me about how to uh, see uh, which implicit conversion were used in some exact place, I decided to change this place to show you uh, our few implicit features. So let's open any place uh, and let's do some code, live coding. So let's test dot r. So it's implicit extension function and we, we want to understand which implicit uh, converted this string. Uh, now we can invoke go to action action and just put implicit. Oh, implicit. So we have conversion and parameters. Here we can just invoke this conversion and see that actual implicit conversion is augment string and we have a lot of different possibilities to convert strings. And if, uh, if actually augment string is wrong, implicit conversion, and we want a wrap string, so we can invoke intention action here and make it explicitly. So that's, that's quite funny. Uh, and what about implicit parameters? It's a bit different feature. So let's let do a bit more live coding. So let's create two classes. One function which requires A. So another implicit function which requires B and returns A. And finally, implicit value B. Okay. Now we have everything we need uh, to uh, define uh, to invoke our new method for. So now we can invoke implicit parameters, 
and see all uh, recursive implicit parameters here. So it's foo1 and b. Moreover, we can analyze uh, all steps in this here, uh, in this case. For example, we don't have uh, implicit value b, so it's an error in, in compiler. Uh, we can invoke that. You can see that it's it's really error because parameter is not found. But then we can take a look for the reason and for possible parameters. Uh, so foo one is possible parameter, but then we, we, we can take a look why it's not chosen. Uh, and it shows that actually parameter not found for type B. And then we can take a look for that and see that applicable implicits were not found. That's all. And we also can navigate to any of these things. So just use go to action action for everything, put uh, something like implicit, and here you go. You can analyze implicit. So that's all about Scala, and that's all about IntelliJ IDEA. Uh, as this is the last uh, session, so I hope you will be glad <laughs> that it, it will finish early. Uh, and uh, I wanted to put more about Scala, but at some point I decided to show you more about IntelliJ ID itself because it's a base and it, it helps a lot uh, in understanding Scala plugin features and discovering plugin features and understanding how to be more productive in general as well. Uh, so I hope you will like uh, this way as well. And Right now we can finish our game and who calculated a uh, number of new things. Uh, we can ask who, who knew everything from this presentation. Okay. <laughs> so uh, who learned only one thing, two things, only one? Okay. So uh, just reach me later uh, after this talk and I'll pro I'll, I'll I'll try to give you something instead of that you just spend this time on this boring <laughs> session so it's 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 a bribe uh, so I'm finished and uh, any questions yeah. I have one uh, because when coming from Eclipse to Delta uh, I could use control shift uh, slash in order to make this comment but I could not undo it in is there a possibility? In IntelliJ, the same shortcut will will undo that. So you can use command slash to uncomment and command slash to command that. So you can take a look for in go to uh, action action. Just go here and see command with line command or block command. So anything. Any other questions? So, so question about uh, macros yeah, editor, editor macros uh, okay in uh, so so I, I I've got a question about editor macros uh, here in IntelliJ idea we have few things the first one is live templates you can add any live template you want uh, so it, it's it's here live templates. Uh, you can choose it. You can, we have a lot of live templates, including some of them for Scala. And you can add anything you need for, for yourself just for live templates. And if you want to replace some actions, we also have possibility like, uh, okay, writing macros. Is, I mean, you, you can record a number of editor actions and then replay them uh, simultaneously. Yes, it's almost simultaneously. Uh, I'm not sure it's, it, it works very well, but still you can do a lot of macroses, I, I mean editor macroses here. Okay. So let's uh, 
so we can start stop macro recording here and play saved macros here. It, it not always works as expected because uh, playing is something like in fast way, uh, but <clears throat> in, in most cases it works. Any other questions? So okay, that's fine. Thank you very much for listening to me.